Hi everyone, I'm Lucy from So Essential and I'm here today with a Q&A. So a while ago I asked you all if you had any questions you'd like to ask me, sewing related or otherwise, and we had a great response. Lots of people left questions in the comments, so I'm going to answer some of them today. I can't do them all because we did get a good response, but I'll work my way through a few um, and just tailor the content for you, which is really fun for me to do. Having said that, if anybody has any questions they'd like to ask, do leave them in the comments below today as well, because I'll just add them to the list and over time, I'll try and answer them for you. So everything I talk about today, as always, is available on our lovely website and you'll find links to our website or any tutorials or anything like that I talk about below. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe because every Friday I bring you a video packed full of sewing goodness. And if you can't wait a whole week, do jump on and check out our social media accounts as well. I've linked them all below and we're very active on there and share posts daily on most of those as well. So let's get started with the Q&A. So the first one, the first question is from Jane Burton and Gina Ryden, who both asked the same sort of question. They both said, you know, what is your routine with sewing? How do you manage to be productive with sewing and produce a lot of garments? Um, you know, when do you sew? How do you approach it? Do you sew for other people? Um, so how, and one of the ladies said, how do you get going and quit dreaming? So... <laughs> Yeah, really good question. I think we all kind of think about this probably because there's never enough time to sew, is there? Um, but for me, routine is key. So that's the same with anything in my life. If I want to make it a regular habit, if I want to achieve and I want to, um, you know, produce a lot, then I have to have routine. Because I find if I just get into a routine, generally, I'll stick with that then. So what I usually do is Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday evening evenings after we've all had our family meal and the kids are sorted about seven half past seven uh, they'll be off reading their books or doing whatever they're doing I try and get down on the sewing machine get going and I usually sew for two two and a half hours I have to be quite strict and, and have a cut off time of nine or nine thirty because I find that I need a little bit of time after I finish sewing to just wind down and relax before I go to bed. Um, and that's what works really well for me. So there are times when I feel really tired, I've been at work all day or I've been busy on my day off doing all the things that need to be done when you've got a young family. Um, but I just always think on those days when I think, oh, I don't know whether I can be bothered tonight. I just think, well, what else are you going to do, Lucy? Sit and watch something on telly that you're not really interested in. I don't really like watching TV there's never much that interests me there um, and I put a good podcast on and I always go easy on myself and think if I feel tired I think well you know you haven't got to make a whole garment tonight even if you just get this pattern cut out or even if you just cut this fabric out you know you, you've achieved something and then usually by the time I get going I actually get quite into it I get into my podcast and before I know it a couple of hours have flown by and then I've got a project cut out ready to start sewing the next evening and that's a great feeling then to go to bed thinking oh I've got that to look forward to tomorrow so um or sometimes I'll like if I cut a pattern out I might if I'm feeling really tired sit in front of the tv and do that so I do have a routine but I'm not too militant about it and I do go easy on myself I do try my best to sneak a little bit of sewing in at weekends as well um which isn't always possible with a young family but now the kids are getting older it's more and more becoming um an option on a Saturday afternoon I can often squeeze a little bit in there so that's how I go about it um in terms of batch sewing and things like that I don't really do anything like that I'm not that sort of um you know efficient I suppose I do tend to just choose a project which is usually driven by what am I missing in my wardrobe at the moment where do I fill the gaps are I come up with the idea I make that project I finish it and then I start the next one um, sometimes there's an exception to that rule so at the moment I'm making a jacket 
and I need to consult with my mother-in-law on a couple of things she's going to show me how to do and she's not always available so I thought right when that comes to a standstill I do need another project in the background that I can just be getting on with so I am cutting out a jersey dress to run alongside that so that if I do come to a standstill with the jacket I can get on with the dress um, and that's just because I don't want to you know I've got these precious little pockets of time on a Monday Tuesday and Wednesday evening and I don't want to be sat there with nothing to do because I don't know what to do next on the jacket so um, yeah I'm, I'm making an exception there um, but yeah for me really it is just that routine it's just kind of pushing myself but you know to think come on do a little bit do a little bit because it's amazing how much these little 20 minutes and half an hour pockets add up and then before you know it you've you've got a finished project and every time I finish a project or I learn something new I get a big buzz and feel motivated and it just generally lifts my mood in life anyway it's not just about the sewing for me you know when I've had a good little sewing session I do feel lighter and happier and that's what it's all about so that is what works for me so I hope that's helpful Jane and Gina. The next question is from Margaret Helliwell, who said, could I advise how to decide how much fabric to buy when patterns usually only quote for 115 and 150 centimetres wide, but lots of fabrics are 110, 140 or 145 wide? So is there a way to do this without having too much wastage? Um, so the first thing I'd say, Margaret, is... From my experience, um, usually the recommendations on the pattern packets have quite a lot of wastage or excess worked into them anyway. So usually if a pattern's quoting two and a half metres for a fabric that's 150 wide, you'd probably be okay with a fabric that was 140 wide. Um, you know, generally that's, that seems to be okay. Um, however, if you're really nervous and you're not, you, don't, you know, you don't want to take that risk, um, the only other thing you could do is cut your pattern pieces out measure the width of the fabric on a table and lay your pattern pieces out as you would cut them out and then you could measure what length of fabric you need and that will give you more of a clear idea of you know exactly how much fabric you might need um, and then the other thing I'd just say is Personally, I don't feel that I ever really have any wastage because any decent bits of fabric I always keep and I use them for pocket linings, waistband linings. I might make a toile if I've got a bit left over, so a practice run um, of another garment that I'm going to make just to test the fit, um, or I might use it to test different techniques. So that's just something that's worth bearing in mind as well. I don't keep little tiny fiddly bits of fabric, but if there's a decent chunk, I'll keep it and generally I'll always find a way to use it. So that's another handy little tip as as well. Diana Galloway said she has problems with uh, waistbands coming up too small or uh, too big for her so she measures herself twice and she measures the pattern twice and the end result is that the outfit is too big. Have I got any suggestions? Particularly happens with linen and denim and she's tried putting twill in the waistband but no difference. So there's lots of reasons why that might be happening Diana. Firstly are you measuring yourself in the correct place on your waist? Um, you can tie a piece of string around your waist and um, just let it fall and it will it should fall at your natural waist so that will make sure you're measuring in the right place um, the other thing is you might be stretching the fabric as you sew so I always use interfacing on waistbands even if the pattern doesn't um, suggest it I would use interfacing and interface that piece before you start sewing it so that it's not going to stretch out of shape we've got lots of interfacings on our website stretch and woven so you can find uh, the link to the website and those below. Um, also, are you stay stitching where it suggests on the pattern around the waist of the skirt pieces or the trouser pieces because that will prevent that part stretching out of shape. And then the only other thing I would suggest as well is just um, you could just make a practice run of the waistband first in some calico. We stock calico on our website. I use it for lots of twirls and practice runs. And you could just make the waistband up 
in some cheap fabric like calico test it and see whether you're happy with the fit and then if not reduce the size of it so i hope some of those tips are useful for you diana and thank you for your question the next question is from sue burke who said she um, was wondered if um, I was happy to talk about what I did before and if I've worked if I worked in the fashion industry. Well, if only Sue, if only I had worked in the fashion industry. What a wonderful, exciting career I'm sure that would have been. But no, I worked in a very dry, very corporate role. Um, I worked in a business as an operations manager and head of shared services. Um, so I was a people manager. I managed contracts. Um, um, so it was completely different to what I do now. Um, obviously, lots of the elements of the job, like organisation, time management, that sort of thing are applicable in our business that I work in now. Um, and there was creativity was needed in that role because of some of the problems we had to tackle, but not in the respect that I've got the creativity in this role. I've had to learn so many new skills in this role Um you know, over the last, I've been doing it probably six years now, I've learned a hell of a lot um, in, with regards to social media, technology, you know, various different things. That was, I was doing nothing like that in my previous role. Um, so that's been really fun, actually, and, and made it really interesting. And I have always had a love of clothes, a love of colour. Um, I love, you know, expressing myself with what I'm wearing. I love new ideas and d uh, different fashions. So it's lovely to have that incorporated as part of my job now, but it's certainly yet yeah, very different from anything I've done before. Um, so thanks for that question. The next question is from um, Margaret Helliwell, who said, can I please ask another question? Well, yes, you can, Margaret, that's fine, because I think this is a really relevant one as well for any beginners out there. Um, she's asked, should she pre-wash fabrics before cutting out? She's read so many different suggestions. What do I recommend? I always recommend, yes, pre-wash fabrics before cutting out. So important, because if you don't, and then you make your garment and then you wash it afterwards and it shrinks, it's not going to fit you. That's the golden rule. So if your fabric is washable, wash it with following the instructions and then and then dry it as you want to dry it. Wash and dry it as you go into wash and dry it going forward and then cut your pattern out and then you'll know when you put it in the wash next time it's not going to be an issue. Um, obviously if you're working with a fabric that's dry clean only you wouldn't do that. Certain fabrics like wools, the wool I'm working on at the moment for a jacket I'm working on um, the suggestion there is to steam it rather than wash it. So you hover the, a, a steam generator, generator iron over every single square centimetre of the fabric and infuse it with steam and that will create any shrinkage before I start cutting it out. But yeah, definitely, Margaret, pre-wash your fabrics. I highly recommend that. Um, and then Carolyn Barber asked about the red dress that's always in the background on the videos. Um, can I show it and say which pattern I use? So I'll, I'll, I'll grab it in a minute, but um, just to say it was Birda 7308, which is sadly discontinued now. However, the beautiful crepe fabric that I used is our John Caldor Prestige crepe fabric. It comes in a range of beautiful colours and it's gorgeous to sew with. So you can still get your hands on that and I'm sure there would be other um, patterns that are available that um, you could make something similar. I'll have a little look actually after this and I'll see if I can find one and, and put a suggestion below um, as a link. So I'll just show you this is the dress. So it's got princess seams. This is actually one of the first things I ever made. Um, it's got princess seams, it's sleeveless, it's got an invisible zip down the back and then it's got this lovely princess seams down the back as well and then this lovely um, full sk skater skirt on it and it's lined as well so it was a big project for a first ever project I really uh, took on a bit of a challenge with this one but I did have my mother-in-law Angela there holding my hand every step of the way and actually it was a great way 
um, to cut my teeth with sewing because I learned so much in that first project. I mean, I learned everything from cutting out the fabric to sewing princess seams, inserting invisible zips. You know, it really was great to go right in at the deep end, but I did have a lot of help. So yeah, if you were doing it on your own, I think maybe that might be a bit much for a first project. But I hope you've all enjoyed that today anyway. As I mentioned, I'll link everything I mentioned below. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.